we are episode 31 for Drive wow. Education Live, and we've got the amazing Quickie Lee with us. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for taking the time out to chat. Okay. Nice um, to see you again. You too. You watching too. your stuff online, it's really lovely, and they, my pupils love it as well. Oh, you are so sweet. Thank you. So, everyone, I met Chrissy um, a few years ago for um, an amazing drum day which was put on by Michelle Dries and it was amazing and I have to say I was so incredibly nervous about doing this and um, I was really nervous because I'd heard about you and I was like oh my god Chrissy Lee's coming and she's playing and she's playing on my drum kit right now for soundcheck oh yeah it was great <laughs> and uh, I was just like you know, excuse my French, but I was like really nervous and thinking, you know, someone of your, with such an amazing career um, behind you, um, you're not sure how someone's going to be. And I have to hand on heart say that you were, you are one of like the most welcoming, genuine, lovely people. And just thank you for that, because I found that really inspiring. And yeah, just that, just want to say thanks. <laughs> well, thank you too, because I was overwhelmed because I thought you were all amazing. And as I say, I'm watching your stuff all the time. Aww. Really great. Thank you. Um, well, let's talk about you because that's why we're here. And okay. um, we're gonna open up, we usually ask uh, a question, the same question every week, which is, um, what do you think is missing from drum education today? Um, I think they need to get real sometimes because I do use a lot of the Trinity stuff. And I mean, I know it's amazing stuff. You know, we can think of so many drummers that are, are, are incredibly amazing, like Dave Weckl. But you know, where are the kids today going to use some of that stuff? I think there should be more basic, down to earth drumming. Yes, of course, the technique's got to be there and all the stuff that you've had to learn along the way with the, the you know, the exercises, the, the, the paradiddles, the, um, the, 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 different, the different types of, of exercises. But I just find it a little bit overwhelming sometimes that why can't we just do some basic playing um, with some basic grooves that that they know where they're starting they can add their own th th their own stuff on as and when by using these these exercises um, and rudiments but um, I don't know they they're not allowing them to express themselves in my opinion Mm. Okay. I think good point. Felipe. Um, I, I have a very pop question, a very pop oriented question. Okay. Why Britta's got talent? <laughs> Do you know why? Um, well, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't really know why. They've been asking me for two or three years to go on. Oh, really? And mm. Yeah, they, they, I, you know, it was it was all a setup. You know, will you come on? Um, and after a while, I thought, you know, why not? But they didn't let me um, answer the give, give the answer. They didn't give me the question, so I could give them the answer. I want to do this for drummers mm. because we're always we're always at the back somewhere. We can never sort of speak for ourselves. Um, and, and, and for women as well. I mean, it is different now. You know, we, we've got people like Kira and, and some of the other great female drummers out there. But in my time, there wasn't any. And we really were not allowed to express ourselves, even be given a gig in a male band. But I don't want to go on. I'm not a feminist. 
And that's why when we did the clinic with Michelle, it was a drug clinic, it wasn't anything to do with gender. Um, but that's what, why I did it, you know, come on, see the drama. You, you know, what, what were the band, were the backbone of the band? And we never get any credit for it. So I just, that's why I did it. Yeah, great. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to, to, to talk a little bit about back then, because you said it was very, very different. Now you have many female players. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit more acceptable, but there's a lot of controversy anyway. How, how difficult was it for you to say, I'm a drummer, being a woman, when you started? It was a nightmare, to be honest. <laughs> it really, really wasn't easy, even to the point of a little 10-year-old going down the road with my side drum under my arm and sticks, going to the Salvation Army, where I was brought up as a Salvationist. My dad and his family were all Salvationists. And even, like, why are you carrying the drum, you know? Um, what do you want to play drums for? And then even when my parents bought me a lovely little drum kit, uh, and my dad would try and get me some some gigs, local, just little local gigs, pubs, weddings, whatever. That, you know, I'd walk in with them and they thought I was walking in with my dad's kit or my brother's kit. Um, and then there was a time when, you know, I wanted to be up there with all the, the greats that, you know, I had a lot of respect for so many drummers, so many musicians. At the time, I have to say it was all male. Um, and, uh, but I couldn't get in. I couldn't get in. I mean, the, the BBC Radio Big Band, the BBC Radio Orchestra, uh, has only in the last few years had a woman in there. So it was very, very difficult and very frowned upon, like, you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, to the point when I went on the uh, the Jack Ponell show, and there was Jack Ponell and Ronnie Verrill, and the three of us did a drum thing. It was, it was great. There was, you know, Ronnie and Jack and me in the middle and he taught us to do the same sticking and you know what was so lovely about them Jack said I've got an idea for when we finish this little solo um, we'll disappear we leave Chrissy on her own for about 64 bars and they came back on the screen one with a dishcloth and one with a tea towel and they said come on Jack let's go and do the washing up and that from then on I started to feel respected nice Right. I wanted to talk about um, when you started playing, because I read that you you actually started at age four. Yeah. And you were gigging by 13. Yeah. And um, who taught you? Like, how did you learn to read and all of these important things for, you know, big band stuff? Who, how where did that come from? I didn't. I didn't learn to read. I didn't want to read. I was quite adamant um, that I, why, why, do, why does a drummer have to read? Mm. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any lessons. I wished I had because I would probably know a lot more than I do now, but I didn't have any lessons. I just watched and listened. And I must have been given an injection of drums when I was born. <laughs> Because it was just something that that happened. Um, Ivy Benson sort of, uh, it, it, many, many years ago, so that I think she was born with drumsticks in her mouth. Um, and it was just something that happened. My my parents didn't have any money, so they, and they didn't have the inkling as to know where to send me for mm. lessons. Um, but along the way, uh, well, then I joined the Ivy Benson band, and she was very tough and she taught me to read uh um which i didn't still like it very much but thank god she did because it's only because of that that i was able to take gigs and sessions and and whatever and like you say for the big band some of the charts for a big band but, but i think i still i still 80 percent my probably reading 100 percent no but my ears are there <laughs> They're not painted on, they're real. And I do listen. I really do listen to everything around me all the time. 
you know, log into the bass player, log into the brass section, log in and be gentle to singers. And I, I just, it's the empathy for other musicians, really. See, that's an, such an important it is. part of it that I feel, you know, talking about drumming education, that isn't always passed on. You know, being just having that listening and making sure, you know, uh, you're not being too loud and all the rest of it. Um, how was that? How long did it take for you to pick up all that reading then with Ivy Benson? Was that a long time or was it, did you feel pressure to really learn and get reading? I, you, yeah, I, I felt pressured and she really, for want of a better word, chucked me in at the deep end, you know, because the drummer that I was going to be taken over from was, her background was more orchestral um and so her reading was was very good but you know what i still wasn't a great reader when i left that band um i i i would always take advice um and a lot of people wanted to help me and wanted to give me that advice because i i asked for it i, I you know i needed i needed the help and as far as teaching is concerned in a funny way, the teach the pupils have taught me how to teach them. They've taught me to read in a yeah. funny sort of way because now I have to teach them. And it's quite strange, really, because my 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 reading is more understanding of it now, probably, <laughs> than it ever has been. And that's since I've been teaching in the last 20, 25 years. So you, you started teaching in the last 25 years. Before that, you didn't want to or you didn't need? No, I, I, did, I didn't think about it, really. Um, I was gigging all the time. We were all working full. You know, we'd plead for a day off. I mean, you know, I, I didn't consider it. I maybe didn't think I was good enough to teach. I don't know. It was only because I was working with other musicians when we felt a lull in this business, you know, where they were cutting back on musicians, you know, they'd have two keyboards instead of a, a brass section. And, and we we're all thinking, oh, you know, and then they'll be using just piano and, 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 and the piano, bass and drummers. There's no room for drama, too noisy for a drama. And, and it was just mates that said, why don't you start teaching a bit, Chrissy? And I was frightened to death when I first started teaching. Because I really didn't know how. I mean, when the young man asked me, asked me that, what what that was, looking at the snare drum, I f I thought, well, you should know, but he didn't. He didn't know anything. So, and it's thanks to them really, because I I have to, when I've got to teach them something that looks quite difficult, like grade six, seven, and eight. Kira, you'll know what that's like. This Trinity stuff. You look at it and think, my God. So I have to go in my studio and look at that to be you know to, to try and play it before they have their lesson yeah because they're going to ask you they're going to say chrissy how does that go <laughs> <laughs> and actually i've got two two students that read better now and quicker than i do but having said that their brain is a lot younger than mine <laughs> i don't think it's about the brain i think they has they have a, a lot less stuff to think about in life and responsibilities I think that's, that's possibly I... it. <laughs> that is possibly it, yes. But uh, no, I do love them. I love my kids so much. Um, in fact, they become like my family. I mean, one one of me has, has decided he wants me every, as his as his grandma. So we've come to a deal, and that's it. So <laughs> I'm now his man. It's so it is so lovely. I, I do adore them and I give them everything. I give them far more um than than one would need to. I'd be you know, I'm I'm backing them up all all, all the way. I can give as, as much as I can give. And if I'm not sure I make a mistake, you know, I'll just say, I misread that. That was supposed to be on the floor, Tom, and not the snare, you know. And it it, it, it makes for a nice relationship between you. When you formed um, the Beat Chicks, um, you supported the Beatles. And I, I really want to know about that time a little bit more because it's like, okay, 
you're in this band, you formed this band, and then you're supporting the Beatles in, I think it was, is it Spain? Yeah, it was Spain, yeah. To me, that's just like massive undertaking to one, form a band, two, get all your songs together, and three, be on the road with a band like the Beatles. How long did that take you, and was that always your end goal, to, to be touring with, you know, a band like the Beatles? When you formed that, when you formed the Beat Chicks, was that what you had in mind? Well, I never thought we'd tour with the Beatles, no. But I mean, I am a very driven person. I, I, I do really, really, and I have worked very, very hard. Um, mm. But I was actually still with Ivy, uh, and suddenly all the orchestrations coming through were of pop music and no longer big band swing and jazz, you know. And I thought, well, what's the point of this? It didn't sound right, uh, having mm. four trumpets, four trombones playing. Um, Rolling Stones, I mean, it, just, it was all wrong, and I, I like things to be in the genre of, of, of what they should be, you know, the sound should be, and, and it's because of that that I decided to leave, plus the attitudes of some of the band were getting like they couldn't care, and I did care, you know, I needed to improve on a daily basis, um, and that's why I formed, I formed the band. Uh, we just happened to be in the right place at the right time, I suppose. We, um, Mike, Michael Black, you know, the famous songwriter? Yep. Michael Black, yeah. His brother, he took us on management. Um, and this, this guy happened to wander into the, to the office and said, I'm looking for band to come out to Spain. I'll give you a six-month contract. And I thought, well, well, why not? I mean, and he made us so big. It's so little time. We we were just we were just massive out there. We had a number one in all the Latin American countries, wow. and then he 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 came round, popped round in the hotel one day. Said, "Oh, by the way, you're supporting the Beatles in a couple of weeks' time." What? <laughs> um, and he was, his name was Ramiro Arango. He was from Cuba, and he was a real businessman. Um, I got to meet his family. I don't know if they're still around. They lived in Miami. Um, but he knew what he wanted and he went out there to get it. And yeah, <laughs> I don't really know. I was we we flew we flew with them in their private jet. Um it it, it was unreal. I mean, people always ask about it and, and I wished it could all happen again so I could enjoy it. Like, probably appreciate it more now than I did then but it, it was them as musicians that I was more interested in and when we were at the side of the stage and um the eight days a week which was one of my favorites and I'm, I'm watching Ringo I'm really watching Ringo and I'm thinking that's not what was played on the record that was nothing like that and then <laughs> I found out that, that Kenny Clare had done the session Really? You'll, you'll know, you'll know, Ken, I mean, Kenny was it, just an amazing, amazing drummer. And and I thought, well, that's not fair. <laughs> but <laughs> it's done all the time, isn't it? Yeah. And how how was it to be with with the Beatles? Uh, were they like kind of normal people or were they rock stars? Pretty normal people, actually. I mean, Paul and John were just thinking and writing all the time, even on the plane. You know, really? they'd look at the window and they'd, they'd, they'd look and not that we, I mean, we were only flying in, within Spain, but you know, there were songs coming in and lyrics coming in to their heads all the time. Whereas um, Ringo and uh, George were just quite miserable and wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! They were totally fed up and wanted to go home. But. Um, yeah, I just felt that that John and Paul were the most friendly. I thought George was rather lovely. I mean, I've um, sort of experienced stuff with Ringo since. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I shouldn't say any more, really. Okay. But, you know, there are drummers and drummers, and, he, you know, he's a two and four backbeat guy, and uh, he did something that was different for the Beatles. But I knew the, the drummer before him in Hamburg called Pete Best, and okay. he was an amazing drummer. 
Okay. Alrighty. No, oh. no, nothing else needs to be needs to be. That's that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not a massive fan. <laughs> But it's, um, it's, a, it's a unique experience because not, all, because not only you, you met the Beatles, you met them when they were on, on the height of their success. So, Absolutely, 1964. So it's incredible. It's, um, not not many people can say that. No, I mean, the crowds, I mean, it was, we had to work in ball rings because there were no venues big enough in Spain to hold the capacity of people. Wow. Um, so and we had to change in the in the uh, in the dressing rooms, which were rather smelly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Kira. Um, I wanted to talk about um, what drives you um, as a drummer, and I think I read that one of your favourite drummers. Um, is Buddy Rich. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I wonder if, you know, if he's still like in your mind and because you're still, you know, you, you do have an incredible drive and I wonder where's that from? What keeps it alive? Do you know, that is a difficult one because I know I'm driven. Um, even today in, in, in stuff, you know, it's like I still want to do things. There's so much more I want to do. Um, and I, I wish the big band could do more. But you know that feeling when you're behind your drum kit, and I'm quite a powerful drummer, although I'm only four foot nine and a half, I am powerful. <laughs> and I think that's come about from maybe years ago that you know, girls don't hit them hard enough. Maybe I've got a complex. I don't. <laughs> maybe I sort of thought, well, I'll show you. They can play them. And it's not to do with size. It's to do with technique, yes. isn't it? Yeah. And I'm asked that question all the time. You know, it is absolutely to do with the technique. You know, when you hit that drum, it's got that stick's got to come back at you. You get you get the power. It's 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 I say to some of the kids, you know, it's 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 a piece of wood. You know, you have to control that piece of wood to you know be prepared for it to come back and just go for it again. And I'm, I'm quite heavy on the on, on on the kick drum as well. Hence, I've got double pedals now. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just have to. You know, I just. Uh, as I say, I'm not as fast as I used to be, but um, I don't like it if if I mess up. So I will really have a go at myself and get myself in the studio. So that, um, yeah, I'm driven because I've got to get it right. The day I, I mess up, I'm not going to play in public again. Whoa, that's, that's a bit harsh. That's powerful. It's more than harsh, that's powerful. <laughs> I know, no, but I couldn't. I don't want people to sort of say, you know, she used to be a, a great drummer. I would rather just bow out gracefully and just think, oh, I've got my little kid at home and um, enjoy. And talking about kids, I must tell you, that on the back of Britain's Got Talent, DW contacted me. Wow. And I've got a DW kit anyway when they endorsed me years ago. They've got a new kit out called um, the P PPD... The, uh, Pacific Pacific New Yorker jazz funk kit. So this guy found me, Dave uh, David Phillips. I used to be with him with Pearl, and he said, "Chrissy, we just loved what you did, and my boss is in LA and would like to give you a drum kit." Wow! Really? Um, we'd like you to do a few video clips, which I've got to do soon, and we're going to put you on the DW website. And I thought. Well, I don't know where I'm going to put it because I've already got four kids. But um, isn't that lovely? Isn't so that really cheered me. That really cheered me up. It's little things like that that make me feel good about myself. Because I have to say, I was feeling down before I went on Britain's Got Talent. We all are because we can't express ourselves. We can't go out with, with our mates 
and bounce off of each other and come up with these lovely ideas where you look at each other and think, oh my God, that was good. So um, I did get a little bit depressed. So going on that has given me a little bit least of life because um, people from all over the world came back and said, Chrissy, we know, you know what happened with the sound. We know that's not you. Um, uh, and we all we always love what you do. So I, I probably needed that. Mm. I, I needed a boost, I think. Cool. Be because we do, we do. Because um, mm. that's that's my love. That's probably what I, I sometimes feel I was put on this earth for. I have no, I have no doubt. Um, so I have to, yeah. I'm really beat myself up if I have a bad gig. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like you're going to have one, because you no, have. No, I hope. Because I, you have the nice. attitude of you're driven and you have the attitude of not not letting that happen. So you know. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there. Are, you, you go through different feelings, and I mean, sometimes you'll have a crowd say, "Oh, you were on form tonight," and you'll think, "Oh, well, I better not say it," but I actually wasn't. Um, but. Uh, no, I love what I do. I can't wait to get back with the lads again and just be playing. Mm. I don't enjoy putting them up and taking them down so much anymore. I just wish that there was a permanent roadie. <laughs> <laughs> I like well, you can, you can, you can, you can use, uh, you can ask your student who's decided. Uh, you're, you're his grandma and say, well, help grandma setting up the drum kit now. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, and they do. And they do. But Carol, you've got a beautiful husband. He helps you, doesn't he? <laughs> um, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> and I, your I two see. little ones. I mean, they're absolutely adorable. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah, no, Kira, uh... Kira, Kira took a little bit of time to answer that. <laughs> Well, no, my my husband, he 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 always wants to help, and he's always like, "Oh, let me help you carry your stuff," and um, you know, bless him. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. I felt I felt that when I when I met him, I thought, "Wow, well, <laughs> you know, you know, you get you know you get that feeling with people," and I do. I've got a lot of a feeling. Um, I love I love people, I love pleasing people, mm. so that's that drives me as well. Mm. That is another thing that drives me. I love for people to have gone. Do you know what I've had a wonderful evening, and and that will keep me that will drive me on. That will keep me keep me going. Mm. Such a great answer. Cool. Uh, besides Buddy Rich, any other drummers you like? Yeah, um, Copeland. Um, um, can't think of his first name. Please, with the police. Stuart. Stuart, Stuart Copeland. Stuart. Oh, absolutely love him. Uh, you know, when it comes to that different type of music. I mean, him, Steve Gadd. Uh, yeah, I love Steve Gadd. Oh, God, I could go on. I mean, they've all got something different to offer, haven't they? Yeah. I mean... I was lucky enough years ago, I went to a drum clinic with Joe Morello and um, people were saying, you, you know, he said, anyone want to get up and have a go? And I was in the background and everybody said, go up, go up, go. And I sat with him and um, he taught me a few things uh, and he was just absolutely adorable. And he'd got to get back to Manchester to the Midland Hotel. And uh, and he hadn't got a, 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 dri a driver, I don't know what happened, but I drove him and his wife to the Midland Hotel and he was smoking Peter Stuyvesant cigarettes and he was putting them out in the in the ashtray in my car and I kept them there for two years. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Morello and he said come on Chris you can have a meal so you're sitting there in the Midland nice, nice restaurant being polite pick up your knife and fork no 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 you don't have a knife you put your fork in your other hand you have a drumstick in the other one and you scoop it up with the fork. <laughs> so he had me doing all this independent stuff. I was knackered at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> lovely man. Lovely, lovely man. That's so cool. 
Excellent. Um, so you were talking about drive earlier, and um, I'm wanting to know just in gen, like, are you do you practice much? Are you a big practicer? Um, is that a word? Yeah. Um, yeah. I and mostly now because I'm I'm still able to do some teaching virtually, uh, mm -hmm. and like I've got two students that are doing grade six and grade seven because they want to. it's not always my thing but the parents want them to um and so before their lesson i go in there and i practice because i have to how yeah. am i going to be their teacher if i can't do it myself mm. so and i have to say it's difficult because mm. i've been drumming so long i do what i do but when you've got a piece of paper dictating what sticking you've got to use yeah yeah and a backward paradiddle and a upturn whatever you know it's like oh my god and i do there's a lot of swearing goes on in my studio <laughs> <laughs> i think i think that goes on in many studios in the world <laughs> yeah i would imagine yeah yeah uh, yeah of course well, it does a question for example if if do you teach absolute beginners I do as well, yeah. Yeah, and uh, what 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 is your first lesson for an absolute beginner? The very first lesson is I'll give them the sticks and see how they're going to hold them. As a friend of mine said to me, "Well, throw the sticks at them, see how they catch them, see how they're comfortable." Um, because they they're always tense, and I I one of the first things is when I like them to try and relax, and um just know know the way just one tap around the kit because uh, you know it, they just want to hit anything inside don't they when they're young just bang crash wall of anything um and you know i give them a bit of leeway because I, I want them to enjoy themselves there's lots of little gadgets in my studio little little things that they're fascinated with like a little toy drum or a little this and that and mickey mouse and because i want them to feel comfortable um I might talk about them about football teams so that I get the comfortability so they trust me. So once I've got that and I can get them comfortable on the stool, um, because that is important, their posture, isn't it? Um, and and um, I do I do insist that they do the grade, the first grade rudiment to, to get the four limbs coordinating. Because they, they all want to do an eight bleed, don't they? They all want to do that. But I say, well, you know, it's going to come a time when it's not going to be like that. So we do do the first three rudiments, the single stroke, the, the double stroke and the paradiddle, single paradiddle. Um, and then we have a bit of fun and I will test out how they, how they uh, click into a track. Because if if they're never ever going to click into where that one beat is, it's going to be difficult. We know we've got hard times ahead. <laughs> and and the way they, the, the strokes really, I thought that's very, very important. Um, high, high strokes, low strokes, uh, open sticking, cross sticking, but that's probably over a period of about six lessons. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask about your big band and uh, obviously with COVID everyone is not gigging but I wanted to know if there's anything we can look forward to if you've got plans that you want to any gigs with them um, next year uh, any more recordings I'd love to hear a bit more I would love to do. Have you got a recording of my big band, the, the jazz, the jazz one? I've got one. Oh, no. I've got this one. Oh yeah, that. I've had a new cover on it because it's a funky thing. This is, yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I loved recording that, and the the producer that was Phil Collins' producer. Wow. And I absolutely loved it. And I'd love to do another album, but and I'd, I'd be quite happy because I paid for that. I paid for the girls because, you know, a lot of them were still at, at, at Unit College and Music College. And, you know, I just, I, re I really respect other musicians. I really respect 
their commitment. And um, so I did pay for every, every one of those musicians to do it mm. um, because otherwise we'd have probably never, never done it. You know, no one's going to come knocking at the door and say, will you do an album, please? Because that's not happening anymore, is it? Mm. No, it's not, unfortunately. Not unless you've got some sort of gimmick. But yeah, I mean, we did the festival last year at, oh, was it Durham? Um, I don't know. Um, I think I, I think we will do some more big band gigs, mm. but of course, that's not happening at the moment. And I hear from some of my musicians, who oh, I've been picking my trumpet up for two, two months. <laughs> well, you better. <laughs> Because when yeah. we've got a big gig, what am I going to do without you? <laughs> Get practicing, people. Now I have to. I've been. I have been good. I've been in that studio a lot because you, you know, if suddenly I've got a gig, it really hurts, and I've got a bit of arthritis now in my left wrist. Mm. Um, and if I don't work it, if I don't work it through, it's just going to pack up altogether, and that's never going to happen. Mm. So I go, you know, you've got to go through the threshold of the pain and just get on with it. That, there's the drive. Yeah, that's the drive. That's <laughs> it. That is, that's spot on. I've got some really good wristbands, and um, I can work. I can work with them. I mean, I've worked with one foot in plaster. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I had to, I had the tour to do, so I had my foot rested on. On a on a the high hat a cushion, on the high hat, um, it it wasn't a jazz gig, so I didn't need the high hat to move. It could just stay where it was. Um, in fact, it was a the sound of the Supremes, and it was one of the original for Supremes, along with three others, and we were touring, and uh, so there wasn't a lot that I had to do other than the basic backbeat and groove, but. I decided to show off one night and do a, a fill and the kid and fell off. <laughs> <laughs> it was just hilarious. But um, I got a bit of applause for that. But uh, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't give in. I just don't give in. I When I was a kid and I played with the Salvation Army bands, I remember my dad taking me out of a, a, a sick bed because I had a gig to do. And much to my mum, absolutely screaming at him. But, you know, that made me think, because he used to say, if you want to be in this business, whatever you're feeling like, you cannot let people down. And I don't think I ever have. And I'm sure you never will. No, I won't. You know when you know someone's just got it. And I've had lots of drummers, great drummers, who are travelling around the world. One of my pupils has been working with Sam Smith. Wow, really? Oh, yeah, so I'm so proud of these people. And then I look to myself and think, you did that. You know, <laughs> yes. it's not just me. It takes two. You know, we need each other. One of my young lady pupils went there for four years, but she fell in love and it's not playing anymore. I'm so upset. You know, you're in love. You've got little ones, but you still play. Yeah. This yeah, is, I don't know. I, wanted to, I know we're kind of out of time, but... Um, it's that thing, it's that drive thing again, is, you know, when people uh, have an issue with your love for drums, like yeah. I don't know if any of us have experienced it when we've been in a relationship and uh, they don't get it. They don't get the obsession, the, you have to drum. It's not whether, it's like, I have to, to stay sane, you know? Like to keep me mentally, Okay, I need to play some drums. I think I have yeah. a question for both of you. Okay. Has, <laughs> has ever anyone said, is it me or the drums? <laughs> yes, to me. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I went out with this guy, I was doing the other man with the Ivan Band. I went out with him for three years on the trot. I really cared, really did care for him. And then it got to the point he said, Well, uh, you know, will you marry me? We got engaged. And then he said, but, you know, you, you know, when? And, um, and then he gave me an ultimatum. He said, it's either the drums or me. Uh, apart from the fact that I'm too 
I'm stubborn and I've got too much pride to give, be given an ultimatum. You're taking away something that I love. Um, so I had to suffer that because you, you know what I ch chose, the drums. Yeah. I was going to say... Was, he, should never, he should never have done that. You know, we could have... We could have yeah, yeah. had the two. I, I've never had someone say that, say that like it's me or the drums. But I've definitely had it where I feel the person's been threatened by yep. this thing in my life. Um, but it was, yeah, it's never going to, you know, drums is like a, a constant, you know. And I think uh, my dad, uh, when Neil asked my dad if he could marry me, I think my dad said, yeah, but she has to drum. You know that, right? Like, yeah. never try and change that, ever. No. And I'm like, yes, Dad. Yes. That's <laughs> it. It's like, this, if you accept me, you accept my drums kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you can feel threatened by people. That can, it can mess up a relationship. It's not, it's not your problem. It's their problem. Because mm. you're going to go and do that gig and they've got a problem with it, or where have you been? How long have you? Whatever. I can't be. I can't be doing with all that um, yeah. at all because I just can't. But I mean, I just one more thing. I know you've got to go, but uh, you know John Miles' music, the song called "Music." Oh yeah. By John John Miles' music yeah. is my first love, and that it'll yeah. be that is my number one song. The lyrics are out of this world, and that's going to be my song forever. Not that I want to talk about not being here anymore, but I've said, if anything happens to me, that's got to be played at my funeral and they've got to bloody well stay there till it's finished. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's six and a half minutes long. His music was my first love and it will be my last. And that is it. Absolutely. Mm. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you so, so much. It's so yeah. lovely to see you again. And Yeah, uh, and lovely to see you. And nice to meet that lovely man. Thank you very much. It was lovely, <laughs> lovely to meet you.